Hey, what's up, guys? You're tuned into another episode of the Truth Seeker Podcast, and this episode was awesome. We interviewed Lori Ivy, who is a spiritual seeker, someone who has had a conscious awakening and created her own tribe on Facebook by reaching out to people who have had similar encounters that she has had and has this huge collective audience of just thousands of people and she's over groups and she's admin and, and seeing uh, this huge awakening online and so I wanted to have her on she's been promoting a lot of my music in these groups as well and so she's been promoting my work so um, really awesome episode her connection kind of goes in and out but we end up having some of the patrons and people who are helping support call in and I got to meet those guys for the first time so we have some awesome phone calls there towards the end so yeah, check out this episode and thanks for listening to the True Seeker Podcast. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the True Seeker Podcast. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I want to say hello to all the new listeners, too, man. Uh, with This podcast has now been on iTunes for maybe two weeks now, and we just got up there, and the listeners have, like, tripled within two weeks. So it's awesome how much the show is growing, and, and you guys are responding to it. So awesome, man. Thank you guys for all the support, all the the shares, the the all the retweets, all that beautiful stuff. And also, we also have to thank you guys for supporting on Patreon. So, patreon.com backslash truthseeker. If you want to support the show, become a member, and you will get extra podcasts. You get access to my music that's not even released yet. Um, all, the, all of that's on there. We got a bunch of new songs on there, a bunch of new content. My book is on there, talking about my journey through witchcraft and the occult and um, Satanism and things like that. And my journey to the light so that book is on there for you guys to download if you become a member as well so i want to give a shout out we just did a show like uh two days ago and we've already got some new patrons already so i want to give a huge shout out to hunter hughes who's listening right now as soon as i click the live button hunter sh shoots me a message on on youtube and, and just lets me know he's listening and hunter if you want to call in go ahead brother we're not tired of hearing your voice he he calls in every show just to say hello so yeah man go ahead and do that if you want to we will be opening up the phone lines as well the phone number is posted in the description of the video and on Facebook and the website, all that good stuff. So Hunter Hughes, man, thank you so much for supporting the show. Uh, you gave your pledge on Patreon, man, and you became a member, man. You are official. You one of, you're one of us, man. Thank you so much. And also Matthew Condes, man. Dude, thank you for all the encouraging words, first of all, and just reaching out to me on Facebook. All of that stuff doesn't go unnoticed, man. Thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for your pledge, dude to actually support what we're doing, help us pay these bills and move forward, dude. I'm so excited about the future. And I think today's podcast is going to talk just about that, being excited for the future and what we like to do, creating your own future. Like we always talk about alchemy. We, we always talk about um, creating the life that you want for yourself. And so we got an awesome guest for you guys today. We're speaking with Lori Ivy. What's going on, Lori? How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's awesome, man. We got a bunch of people already hanging out in the chat room, man. So if you guys have questions and comments for Lori, I know Lori has got a pretty pretty big, uh, I don't know if I'd call it a, a, a fan base more you know, than a family, you know what I'm saying, that you've built online over the years. And uh, so, yeah, you guys can call in and uh, ask questions or join the conversation as well. That would be um, available. So we were supposed to do the interview two days ago. But you went on a retreat, a spiritual retreat with some friends on Facebook, and you don't you don't have reception, you don't have internet reception and, and all that good stuff. And I said, okay, we could just 
you know, we could just reschedule when you get back home where everything's normal and you got your reception and stuff. But then you say, well, I'm not going back home. <laughs> yeah. Tell me yeah, a little I, bit I, about, you know what I'm saying, what you're doing and where you are now. Well, it, it all kind of started last year in May. Um, I decided to open up my Facebook page. There were just 325 friends on there. And I just decided to start speaking my truth more and more. And I went public. And just in the last year, it's grown into this. And um, last July, I quit my job and I got rid of all my possessions. And I traveled around the country for five months. And I went around meeting other brothers and sisters, the family on Facebook that we've been growing. And um, I backpacked across the country and ended up in Florida and lived there for a while. And then um, some of some, some individuals that I've met on Facebook that actually live up here in the Iowa area um, flew me up here and it kind of turned in, we started doing sort of an energy retreat and um, I've just decided to stay for a while. I feel like this is the place to be. There's a lot of people up here that um, I see as sort of gathering in this area. Um, and it just feels really good right now. So this, that's sort of where we are. And um, we're, we're creating bigger pages, but, you know, we're creating other pages and, and sharing and we're bringing more people along because it's about bringing the community together because, you know, it is about self energy, but it's about the collective as well. And um, so that's how, that's why we're here right now is to bring everybody together and to just show that we're all in the, getting in the same mindset on the same frequency of where we want to evolve. And, and I just appreciate the opportunity and being here and being able to do this with you. So thank you. Dude, thank you so much for resonating with my work and supporting my music and pushing it out there to the, to the masses and letting me you know, introducing me to your community is awesome. So there's a story in everything that you just said, and I want to kind of pick some of those pieces apart. So what was the, the first thing that kind of led you or pushed you towards, okay, let me go ahead and quit my job and pursue <laughs> my calling and what I feel led to do? Because my wife's got me reading a book right now. I think it's called You Are a Badass, and I'm not really sure the, the you know, the uh, uh, person who wrote it right now, but that book is all about, like finding your calling and pursuing it. And it's it's de definitely very similar to The Alchemist. We talk about that a lot. But was there any books or whatever? Or was there a guru or a medium or somebody you met and they said, look, you know, your best life is ahead of you and what you're settling for. You need to you need to follow your dream. Was it something like that or was it just something you knew you had to do? It's just something I felt, you know, I, I didn't really have I didn't have guides growing up as a child. I didn't have guides in my face guiding me with a book and showing me the way to the light ever. And so I just I just realized that I've always felt energy very strongly and my intuition has always sort of been there. But I wasn't shown the way to understand the frequency of energy. And I just always had a natural pull to it. I always felt like there was something bigger than me. And um, I, I just, I could feel the shift within the universe change, the energetic flow that we're receiving, the frequency that's changing. And it just pushed me to want to get rid of any, um, any, uh, any connection to anything that I used to be any attachment. I want, I just felt the need to break away from all attachments. So my path was pretty extreme. I mean, most people don't leave all everything they know and go live in a tent for a few months while they're walking across the country. So, but that's, that's the path that I needed to take because I had to learn how to balance this energetic frequency that's coming in. And it's just, uh, it's about shedding the outside social programming to way that we think that things are supposed to be and just listen because all of the answers lie within the energy that we have generating within ourselves. I mean, that's, that's the soul guide. That's the intuition. And it's not about breaking away from everyone and everything. It's really just learning how to quiet the mind to be able to maintain that meditative state of mind. And I just felt the pull to do that. I didn't realize that now, but now looking back, I decided to follow my pull, my passion, because that's where our individual DNA energetic you know, pulls are. And so I just decided to just shut the outside world out, sort of, but get out there in it to see it for myself, like full fledged. And that's when I started to become one, when I started to get quiet and listen to myself and listen to nature. And uh, so that's just that I trust my intuition. I yeah. trust the energy. Now, how that's, was that as like, like, like 
you know, as a child, because like if you're very uh, um, discerning of spirits and of energies and vibration, if you can feel that as a kid, like we don't have nobody teaching us that or, or you know, what I'm saying telling us that like that's totally removed from our culture. Right. So we go through this stuff. People are sensitive to vibrations on other people. They influence them. It, you can get into psychosis if you don't balance the energies within yourself, right? Um, did you ever get to a place where you kind of fell upon rock bottom or anything like that? Like you got to a place where you needed help because the energies were there? Because I know there's a lot of people in this field who they don't really ascend until they kind of take upon the story of the Phoenix and go down into the ashes and hit rock bottom and then reemerge with this reawakening. Was there Was there a place like that for you? Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, you know, I, I don't really remember a whole lot. It's almost like a lot of my childhood was a fog. Um, you know, I had a pretty tumultuous childhood and I, and I carried on that conditioned behavior through most of my life. Um, I just recently got sober from using drugs a year and a half ago. I quit drinking alcohol about eight months ago. I quit smoking cigarettes four months ago. So, you know, I, I have gone through the stages of evolution within myself because no one understands energy until we quiet our minds to listen because no one no one's teaching anybody this stuff and that's what's so amazing now is that we can see the the revolution the evolution of humanity is taking place because we're here having this interview we're here having this talk right yeah. now and and it's people you know it's it takes us having to break outside of the mold and not to fear anything because but speaking truth is just a fear of self, of the outside conditioned ways of thinking. If we realize that those ways aren't the way that we think because we need to think for ourselves, um, then that's how we get quiet and we start to hear our truth and our passions to follow our dreams, to see what our energy is here to do, not the energy of someone else. When I started doing light work, when I started doing energy work, like I've got a lot of messages in my inbox of people saying, man, you've helped me so much. I've e experienced God through your music and just all of these different um, messages of, of gratitude. And every, when I got those messages, I started saving each one. I was like, man, I'm saving this. So when I fall upon times of depression or not feeling adequate enough I can go back and read these messages of how I help people and it will motivate me but the messages started coming in so much so there's no way I could save all of these messages from people did you ever get to a place like that to where like when you first started getting these these messages of gratitude from people where you've helped them out and like like you know what I'm saying what does that do for you spiritually when you know that your words are not falling upon deaf ears um you know it's very humbling to me I it like takes my breath away now just uh just talking about it it um it, it's amazing it's very humbling that people trust um that people trust you with their hearts and that's that's something that's really amazing because it's not it's not something that i've always recognized within myself even though i i, I recognize it in other people i mean that it, it's it, it's very humbling it's very touching and that's what it's all about i mean that's that's the calling that's that's what i feel like i'm here to do is um love myself and by that i'm able to to help other people see how to love themselves too everything's just kind of a duality you know what we have going on within us is what we see and create outside mm -hmm. so what would you say to somebody who was in a situation similar to you who they feel disconnected, you know, they, you know, they don't feel at home in this place, you know, every, you know, their, their interests are, are different. The, the, the things that they're involved with are different, but they feel alone. Like, what would you say to that person who's at the cusp of this spiritual awakening and don't really have anyone to talk to? Um, you know, I still go through stages even now because you know, myself, every day we evolve, every day there's new situations, every day there's new people. There is no pentacle of just, I mean, we always have to be able to shift within the energetic frequency that's around us and we all vibrate differently of the same source. So, I mean, it's really just understanding that our people, we're all gathering, we're all coming together. And 
in times where it feels lonely, it's okay to feel lonely. Like it's about not pushing those feelings away. And I mean, that's why we end up using alcohol and we end up using drugs and things like that because we escape the reality that we can create. So when we realize that part of the process of shedding the old ways of thinking, it is, it, it is a destructive process of, you know, shedding who we thought we were. It's emotional. We have to purge all of the emotions of the way that we thought and everything. So it's okay. I always tell people it's okay to feel alone. Like, don't brush it away. Embrace it and just know that this is part of ascension. Like, we are taking away parts of who we thought we were. And then I went through, I mean, I isolated myself. I lived off grid. I, I felt very alone at times, but I knew slowly because I could see that, that as I raised my vibration, the same sort of vibrations were I was then attracting. So that's why we're all gathering on Facebook. That's why we're all gathering in person. We're doing these shows and TV and books and things are coming out because this is the new frequency that we're all setting, right? And so it's okay to feel alone. If you feel the push to be reclusive and be at home and be quiet, do it because that's what soul's telling you to do. But if you feel like getting out and going to the park, do it. You just never know who you might run into because the frequency is so beautiful like that. That's, that's the natural law of attraction of natural manifestation of energy. So I just say go with it. Flow. If it feels good, the energy goes there. Even if it hurts, it's okay. Like that's part of the purging process. We have to be easy, family. <laughs> um. Okay. So, what? Like, how powerful is it, or how important is it to kind of find your tribe and kind of find those people with with like interests? Because I mean, that's kind of like kind of the big thing that you guys are doing. You guys just don't set up pages, but you guys are setting up like Facebook groups and community and stuff like that online to where you guys are actually meeting in purpose uh, in, in purpose and changing your life, like changing your living situation and all kind of stuff, you know, that happens. So like how important is it for somebody going through a spiritual awakening to find like-minded people? Um, you know, when we, in, it's very important because, I mean, but even even the ones that aren't, we don't feel like are part of our tribe are just as important because the reflection of self we see through another person, which is a mirror image. And so we can we, we then start to be able to see, which is really feeling the frequency of someone. So if you feel someone who makes you feel kind of like, oh, like you just got that feeling, well, that's just a different frequency. But then, you know, you meet someone where it just feels welcoming and warm and comfortable. That's the same vibrational frequency. So that's how we can sort of pick up on who's sort of part of our tribe. And we can actually start to just see, we get like those tug pulls. And so it's really important. You know, I've spent so much time in solitude over the last few years with getting sober and then adjusting to these energetic changes that now being here and being around all these different individuals that I see are sort of of the same frequency in this area. Not, I mean, not everyone, but mm -hmm. you can see. Yeah. Um, it's really good because um, it, it does help to see that we are not alone in this and that we can learn and grow from each other and we're just channeling and, and inspiring each other. So just know that the gathering is coming and we're slowly coming together. It's it's really important because we're here to inspire one another. We're here to get ideas from each other and grow, not to push away and retreat and be reclusive. So it's just about getting outside of our, you know, the old conditioned, clouded ways of thinking to see clearly. And then that we start to see the same vibrational energy in other people. And then we find our tribe. Who who were some of the people that kind of inspired you early on, whether it's someone online who was doing the same type of, of things that you're you know you're now doing or if there's any gurus that you just resonated towards like books or, or audio lectures or anything was there anything like that that came into your life during this process that you're very thankful for at this point well you know i mean i'm just so thankful for everything i i have to say like social media facebook really has really evolved us so much and it's really just been that the the draw of people that have come into my life by me speaking my truth on facebook 
it, it was an automatic pull. So we're all our own gurus. So every little meme, every little article I've read, every little video, any little thing anyone has ever said that made my antenna go up mm-hmm. was a frequency pulling us together. So I'm thankful for myself. And I'm thankful for the collective because yeah. we would not be here within this spiral, within this swirl, if it wasn't us together. So I'm thankful to all of you. <laughs> yes, yeah, the collective, man, that really helps kind of, you know, kind of push the message forward. And it, you know what's so weird, though? I, I will say it's weird and it's good. But when you get into those Facebook groups where there's a, a lot of people and they have an agenda or whatever the case is, sometimes I've noticed that... Um, people have their agenda and and it's not open for everyone else like they're not about the collective they're like okay my group is to promote my work and i've i've kind of evolved it like it was supposed to be the conscious collective but it in the end this is what i say goes type deal and you run into a lot of those people if you share an article that they don't like they'll delete it or you know ban you from the group and I'll, there's a lot of that stuff that goes on that it is a ver- it's a very weird place to be but have you had any experiences like that too it's like people who have the platform and they promote unity and they promote free thought but when it comes down to it they're like nope this doesn't belong this doesn't belong it's not what we're resonating with or something you know sure yeah i mean uh when we have a lot to say and we're putting it out there you know we have to look at it from an outside perspective because we all see things based on where we are within ourselves you know and I know that I have transitioned so much in the information that I put out, the way that I put it out, the flow of it. And yeah, you know, I get kicked out of groups, you know, I get removed and things like that. And it's just because it's the natural flow because as we're changing and evolving within our knowledge, everyone else too. So, I mean, you know, I, I feel that healing work is free work and um, it should be have a lot of freedom to it for people to express themselves. But and to grow, you know, yeah. so, you know, but everybody has their own flow of where they are within their frequency at this moment. So, you know, it's just we're all sort of on the same grid. We're just in different locations of frequency, mm-hmm. literally. That's what it is. Well, it's the same thing within our consciousness and our evolution within. I mean, the way that we all see things right now, I mean, we're all letting go of control, letting go of attachment. So, I mean, I, I tried to put things in boxes along the way, and I, I that's why I struggled so much in my life because yeah. I am not inside of that box. So finally I just said, we're all just going to have freedom, but we're all going to respect each other and let's talk about it first. Like that is the one thing, like – respect is something that is can be a word that gets in the way a lot just like a lot of words but it's just being open to communicate like if people want to be open to communicate they're going to be open to communicate or they'll shift within it and then if they don't then they will put they will weed themselves out so you know like finding the tribe happens but the ebb and flow of the frequency that comes in and out of it is going to change so mm-hmm. being pushed out of a group or being kicked out of a page because someone's perception is different than the other is not it has nothing to do with the two people involved it's just that there's a different flow of frequency at Mm -hmm. that moment and it'll all come back around because generally it does because you know we're all seeing it different different wavelengths so to speak that's what i've noticed and that's why it's important for me to have like you know i'm saying the collective that kind of resonates with your work because i found out because i know you do videos and stuff too and it gets weird when you share that in other groups because if you share your own work or if I share my music in a in a group or whatever or the podcast for instance they're like up oh, he's promoting his own work so he's spamming it he should just he's sharing it in several groups it's spam I'm kicking him out of the group for spamming <clears throat> but if someone else promotes your work it's all fine. If somebody else promotes your video or shares it, then, then there's there's no there's no worry. That's the weird thing, you know. Um, so that's why it's important to have like a like a fan base or a community that that support your work and can you know recognize the power and energy behind it. So you can put something out there and then they share it for you, and then it kind of motivates you to in turn return the favor and do the same thing with people that you resonate with and let them post on your wall or in your groups and things like that as well. So there's almost like an etiquette to it as well, you know? Yes. 
Yeah, and, and I and I know exactly um, what you're talking about, um, and I, I kind of ha- I have those feelings too, and that's part of the human conditioning that we think that, um, you know, we want to judge someone based on the movement of where they're going, yeah. even when we support that person. Yeah, the, you know, things can change, and because the energy changes, and um, and it does become, and and it's like it's like when it comes to promoting self, it changes, even though we're still promoting the same thing that's on a meme that someone else created. Exactly, exactly. So I feel you 100% on that because my human conditioning has gone, Oh, Lori, you know, like you're going to see me to people, even though I, I'm not the egotistical person in the view of what we think an ego is like, it's all about the vibration we set. Because it's just energy. Ego is just energy. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're doing things from an authentic light, you know, then it's a higher vibration and it's out of the goodness. Like, I'm not doing these things for any gratification whatsoever, ever, other than sharing what I feel like I'm supposed to share. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay if people don't like me or whatever. That's okay because I'm not doing it for likes. I'm doing it because it's what I feel is passionate for myself. And it just happens to be helping the collective, which you and and a lot of people feel the pull to do. And and that's why we're the truth seekers, because we feel the truth within ourselves, because we feel the vibration. Yeah. Speaking of that, um, I, we, I know I know we have a question here in, in the in the chat. Uh, someone we, we, we talk about the force and, you know, feel the, the flow and the energy. Hey, Derek, yeah. My, uh, my phone is going to cut off again. It's because my temperature is getting hot on my phone. Oh, so wow. if we cut off, I'm going to have to reboot and start over because we're making it hot. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. We'll do what we got to do and like anything we need to okay. do, you know, in post editing. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. can, I, I can edit as well. So any, okay. any uh, time that you're not on. So we we do have a caller coming through and I, I know he was posted in the um, in the okay, chat cool. asking you about Star Wars. Well, I'll just I'll just bring him on and. <laughs> Let him ask his question. Uh, Hunter, are you there, man? That was quicker than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you hey, called Hunter. in at the beginning of the show last time, man. <laughs> so, yeah, what's going on, brother? You got a question? Um, uh, yeah, the reason I asked is she's a Star Wars fan. I completely missed the part about the Force because I had took it because I was listening to guys on YouTube, and YouTube, it's uh, backlogged a little bit compared to listening to guys on the phone. Mm-hmm. So, the reason I was asking about Star Wars is because. Um, I would, one of the things that, um, cause I used to like read the, um, uh, what's the word it called? The, um, the, like the extra books they have, like that goes outside the movie universe. Yeah. And, uh, and I also used to play the games. And one of the things that I remembered from the game, one of the games I used to play them, there was the Sith code and the Sith code goes, this is how it goes. It's peace is a lie. There's only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The force shall set me free. Mm-hmm. Yes. In that, in, yeah. So I'm thinking, like, how do you think that applies to our daily lives and spirituality and kind of that regards? Well, yeah, because what they're speaking of in those lines is just the understanding of energy. And so when we can take the human concept away, which is the, the, the human outside conditioning, right? When we take that away um, and just focus and get quiet within, that's where the force is. That's when we're able to see the energetic flow of frequency. That's, that's, you know, that's the empathic ability that we have because we're energetic flows. I mean, we're conduits, like we have water, we have electricity, the nervous system, the neurotransmitters that fires communications within the brain. It's really getting outside of the universe, which is what we think as humans are to see the force. And, and so that's what really Star Wars is about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Force so Awakens I, is the Kundalini, the Kundalini Force yes. awakening within yourself. And those movies were big. You know, for me, when I had my awakening, when I was going through my experiences and having these deep uh, experiences in 
meditation. I was watching <laughs> I was watching Star Wars really for the first time. We watched it from the beginning to the end, the first time I seen it, and it was blowing my mind. Like I I took a bunch of those samples and put it I put it up, you know, all of my music and stuff. They're talking about, you know, there's a scene on there where Yoda talks about I'm going to teach you to commune with your master who has gone on before you through meditation. It's like, wow, like mm-hmm. this is really like there's a lot of truth to that, you know, the even even in the Bible, like people like, you know, they get mad when I talk about this stuff and bring the Bible in. But the Bible talks about the great cl- cloud of witnesses that are watching over you and, and people mm-hmm. are having encounters where saints who have gone before them are appearing to them in a in a in a in a state of euphoria, in a trance like state of meditation or getting caught up in ecstatic realms of worship, man. So this stuff is, is really deep, man. And I think they hide a lot of those truths within those movies, man. There's a lot of nuggets and a lot of things that Hollywood knows that they put in there to try to get out to the masses. And, and people think that they're making it up. But these stories and, and, and signs and symbols are really old, man. And even, you know, the term Jedi, those are talking about the Jedi uh, priest from Egypt, like there was a, a real priesthood of magicians called the Jedi. It's spelled, I think it's spelled uh, D J E D I. It's got a D in front of it, and and these were uh, priests out of Egypt who did all these miracles and believed in this energy and stuff and used it. And and, and so like every religion and every faith and belief system, they talk about the Kundalini. They call it different things. We call it the Holy Spirit in Christianity. Back in Egypt, it's called tachyon energy, the force, kundalini. Like this is all these different names for the same terms that we're talking about. Speaking in tongues, glossala. Like that's practiced in every religion. Like so there's this universal language of, of love and of spirituality that people have kind of taken and tried to brand it. But it when we talk about Star Wars, Star Wars is powerful, man, with with hiding those nuggets in there about angels and angels being out there on other planets and traveling the the universe, all that stuff, man. It's awesome. Well, and see, and and if we want to get down to it scientifically um, from the human anatomy, the physical part is the endocrine system, you know, attached to the brain. Like I think about um, a jellyfish, like the head is the main brain, right? And then the tentacles is like the, the electric system like the flow of energy and that's like our our nervous system within our body i mean it, we really can see all the signs in nature and in front of us that are the same thing within the vessel in which we are in this lifetime and um yeah i mean the bible everything it's all stories laid out of the reality of actually what's taking place <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's it, it's all just it's the tools for us to see, mm-hmm. but if we have to take our own human emotion, our own outside condition ways of thinking away from the way that we see things to really, really let energy pull us into the message. And, and that's, uh, that's where the Yoda comes out. I like to think of our brains as like, I was just talking about this yesterday with someone like, like we got like C-3PO, the, the AI side, mm-hmm. and then we have Yoda, which is the non-physical, the Native American spirit side, mm-hmm. you know, like that's really what's, that's what's just been awoken. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that, that's the way that it's been shown to me uh, more so over the last few days, we've had a big energetic shift and, um, yeah, so there's uh, there's all kinds of different truths and so many different things. It's just pointing to the one, which is source, which is source energy. Yeah. Everything that connects us and everything that flows. It's truly like the power of the stories, right? Even like the power of your story. So we talk about the Bible or talk about the Bhagavad Gita and all these other books. Like people try to take them literally. Like they'll read the Old Testament and, uh-huh. they'll, you know, they, they kind of go out and try to prove that Noah existed or try to find the ark or the burial place of Goliath and, you know, all this stuff. And they want to find it to kind of prove that it existed and say, aha, yeah. I told you it's true. But the power is not in if those people existed, if King David and all these people existed. The power is not in that. The power is in 
the allegory, the messages that are hidden and woven within the stories of faith, overcoming obstacles, overcoming idolatry, uh, smashing your your idols, uh, fighting, you know, with with giants who occupy your promised land, which is your destiny and, and life's purpose and dealing with them and getting them out of the way. Like that is the, the stories that are woven through there. And if we can't really understand that, then we're not really understanding how the Bible is. And we're trying to take it literally and trying to debate people. And man, the, the stories of the Bible are telling your story. It's your story and your spiritual walk and path to ascension as well. And we got to understand that. Yeah. Um, I look at it. Um, I've never thought of it from a biblical standpoint. That's really interesting to learn. I always thought about more about human spirituality when it comes, when it comes back to the skeleton. Here's why. I'll do a quick breakdown real quick. Um, when first line, peace is a lie. It starts off really dark, but you have to realize while we do strive for eternal peace, the only time we will really achieve that eternal peace is pretty much when we die. We will have peace for short periods of time on this earth, but we will always be fighting. We will always be struggling. We will always be attacked by our demons and whatever we, comes after us. So we have to realize that when it says peace is a lie, it's really saying we will not always be at peace. And that goes into there is only passion. For me, that comes from my music because it's just something that always stuck with me as a kid. So my music became a passion, a form of expression for me. Then through the passion, I gain strength. I feel empowered. Well, I don't want to say empowered because I'm, we got that one next, but it's like my music, it feels like it gives me strength because it's like it puts me, it almost like it puts me on a platform. It's like I have this gift given from God, the Kudalini, that he wants me to use for it, for and to strengthen me in the strength of my walk. Then it says, through power, through strength, I gain power. And this is, I think, the biggest part because there is power in words. We've always, we've all known this yeah. for ever since we were little kids, because you can, you can either build a, you can either build a bridge or tear down a wall with what comes off your tongue. Yep. That's how powerful an impact these words are, and that's how powerful words are, especially in the hip hop. Because we talked about this with Alonzo, that rap is such a big influence these days to a lot of people because of the words that people say and how artists relate to others with their words. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's just through power, I gain victory. If those words are the right words that you are supposed to be sharing, then there is a victory. There is a battle won there. And it's, and then pretty much through victory, my chains are broken. When we achieve victory, when we have defeated whatever we are struggling against with or whatever has been holding us back, the power that gives us victory helps us helps us unleash the shackles from our chains, and that's where the force shall free me. Yeah, it's powerful, man. There's all types of allegory <clears throat> within that, and it's funny because people try to like. I know there's books out there that say like, okay, we're gonna give you the Buddhist breakdown, and um, like uh, you know, Star Wars is modeled after the Buddhist philosophy and things like that. But when I'm watching it. As a Christian, as someone who has faith in Christ, I'm seeing biblical <laughs> theology spoken, you know what I'm saying, throughout that, that, that a whole, whole movie as well, and the Holy Spirit and things like that. And so what, what's, what's crazy about it is that um, if you look up who influenced George Lucas to actually write that movie, it's a guy named um, Joseph Campbell and we actually sampled Joseph Campbell in the inner reaches of outer space and so his he, he's got this map that he mapped out it's called the hero's journey and it shows you the path that all heroes must m must walk like the path of Jesus is the path, path where you're born you struggle as a kid and then you kind of reach this level of enlightenment and then you fall back down and then you build back up and he's, they, they have it like mapped out in a diagram and so all major movies marvel all of this stuff and actually george lucas c came out and said that he he modeled star wars and got the inspiration to write it from the hero's journey from joseph campbell so i'll encourage everybody to go out and check that ch you know what i'm saying check that out because that's throughout the scriptures that's throughout the Bhagavad Gita, all of these old ancient stories and it's even your story you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's the power behind all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just not telling a story of Anakin Skywalker. It's telling your story. Everything is. It's beautiful, man. It's a, everything is an extension of who you are. This is what the, um, 
the flower of life is. Everything is an extension of you. We are all connected. So we don't look at anyone else as separate to who we are. Everyone is a, is a, is a part of us. And it's just somebody that you don't agree with or someone who you don't like. Usually it's because they represent something that you don't like about yourself. And it's the same way when people you know, feel a certain way towards you. I know, Hunter, you talk about dealing with people on your job and people being mean, people poking fun of you and stuff. And a lot of times they do that because maybe they were bullied. So they want to in turn do that. So a lot of times we represent something about people that they don't like about themselves or they see in themselves. Welcome back, Lori. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going in on the Star Wars stuff a little bit more. Uh huh. Yeah, you know, and and that's the thing. I mean, when if when we feel an energetic vibration coming from someone that doesn't flow with the frequency that we're at, that's when we can start to feel a pull, and it it's it's really just a sign. But then we put the human uh, emotion behind it, where we start to get frustrated and things like that because we're not really recognizing the signal before we put the frustration behind it. So as more and more for me, I notice as I evolve and I'm able to see those frequencies clear, I'm able to sort of, I'm able to adjust my, cause it's really about my frequency and how I adjust my frequency with someone else's. So either I can choose to stay and be around and work to maintain the meditative state of mind, or I can leave the situation. Like there's always a solution to, interacting with other people and it's just like our how we see others as a reflection upon ourselves you know meaning and how our reactions are someone can come up and say something but it's really all about our energy and our reaction and what we decide to do with it so it's just about understanding that we're all at different levels we're all at i don't even like to call it levels really i just like to call it you know different frequency of the same energy Mm -hmm. and it's and it's how you interpret everything is how you translate it and once you know that it's not personal like even the bible yeah. says that we that our battle is not a flesh and blood but a spiritual yeah. battle of powers and principalities in heavenly places that's our battle so it's not this i can't stand Lori ivy she's blah, 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 blah. no it's because like a lot of times people they're like uh, like jealous of you or jealous of your platform so they're like i feel like i should have that platform she 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 hasn't you know i i know way more than her so why don't i have that platform like people feel that type of way man I've, I've dealt with it personally and it, it's a spirit it's spirits that influence people and spirits of envy and things like that and so you have to be able to discern and recognize what's going on and you can like there are places you can get to where a situation happens a hunter was talking about a while ago that we're always going to fight to the day that we die we won't find rest until eternity but these fights become a lot easier like it so instead instead of saying a fight i like to say taking test because we have these tests that come and we always have that this one test that always stumps us. We, there's one question that we can't pass. But once we study and we respond correctly, we answer with love and understanding. We pass that test. And then so the next time that test comes, we evaced it. Next. What's next? You go to a higher level, a higher level of understanding, a new level mm-hmm. of plateau to where you can pos- go out and possess the land. There's things in your destiny that God has put within your spirit, even a- as you were a child. And you know that that's my destiny. That's where I'm headed. But you can't see it because it's already people occupying it. But so through the help of, 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 of source energy, of God, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, will help you determine how to go in there take the land and walk in your calling and everybody deserves to do that everybody uh is privileged to recapture that dream that's the whole thing about the alchemist we i talk about that book all the time and it's about having a dream when you were a kid and the, you or, or you know things happening in your life circumstances and situations that take that dream from you or oh, you can't have it you know you're not going to have that you're you know you can have an offshoot of it you can dream about it you can think about it whatever but you can't really have it because of it's not for you other people deserve it you know you've done too much bad or whatever the case is or the conditioning that you, even through religion yeah. you know what i'm saying that we're not supposed to be rich we're not supposed to have money or possessions and money is evil like these weird like thoughts that are not of god and so we, we have these thoughts and stuff and they take our dream from us or we'll just settle for second best hey i'm just thankful for what i have so to really find your path and to say okay i'm happy and i'm thankful for where i am in the journey and everything that i have i don't take it for granted but there's 
we're still supposed to want more. Like we're sp- we're not supposed to settle for second best to keep pursuing those callings and dreams that God has put within you. And the alchemist is about going for that dream and telling the universe, telling God, telling your situation that, you know what, I'm going to pursue it and, I, and I'm not giving up on it. And the universe gets with you and responds to that and begins to go around and make this stuff happen for you and bring people. That's what synchronicity is. When we're on that path, we start saying phrases and seeing numbers and 11, 11, 333. We start seeing things. And that is universe letting you know, look, you're on the right path. Keep it up. Don't give up. Don't give up. And it, it starts blowing your mind. You'll say something and then somebody walks by with a T-shirt with the phrase on that you just said. You'll say it and the TV says it exactly when you say it. And it's like, what? Well, hold on. It's like a glitch in the matrix. This is God, source energy, letting you know that you're on the right path, man. And this is this is what the spiritual path is about, man. Just enjoying life, enjoying the journey. Don't get discouraged, you know, because we all, we all have setbacks and things like that. But it's like, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? You know, and so we we're all walking out the hero's journey. Yeah, and so like that's actually like, funny. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, boy. Go ahead, say your thought. <laughs> no, Hunter, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I just thought it was funny. It was a uh, mentioned the alchemist was uh, because um, okay, you are you both familiar with the anime called The Full Metal Alchemist? I know I what it is. I don't, I don't know. I don't I never watch it though. Okay. So if you, if you ever do decide to look it up for yourself, watch the original, don't watch the one that says full metal alchemist brother. The original one, when it goes, when you watch it, they go big into this idea called equivalent exchange. The And this is what I've been wondering for a while too. The idea is that you can't exchange that. You have to have something of equal value or greater to get something else back. You can't always ask for more, which in your position, I like, I understand what you're going through about the asking for more, but that, but the equivalent exchange thing makes sense when I think about how, because that can also apply to our everyday lives as well, as in what happens when we try to ask for more when we only give so little. Because I know I've been in that position before where I've tried to do that, I've tried to ask for more, and I've not done my part spiritually, and it backfires big time because yeah. they try to do that in the anime and it backfires badly. Mm-hmm. You there, Lori? So. Okay, I think Lori's connection. I think we lost her again. Her connection went out again. <laughs> no, dude, that's true. And all of, dude, all of those um, cartoons and video games, man, like World of Warcraft, like there's there's so much spirituality and stuff woven within these storylines and so yeah especially using the name alchemist in that in that cartoon i'm sure there's a lot of spirituality you know what i'm saying linked in it the, the show um avatar the last airbender that was huge they're telling you about chakras and energy systems in in, in your body and and how they work they're giving you like the best breakdown you can get we used i used to watch that show and just get blowed away and and that's what they're, they're talking to about Med, going into meditation and accessing the spirit realm, accessing, you know what I'm saying, the spirit world, all within a cartoon. And some of that stuff is straight out of some of these big, you know, you know what I'm saying, big deep books or whatever. And you're talking about, I, I seen you asked earlier about Manly P. Hall and you was looking up one of his books, uh, The Secret Teachings of All Ages. A lot of that stuff is, is, is actually in that book, man. So you was asking me, should you get that one? Totally get that one. You said which one to get? Um, anyone, anyone you want. I would get the reader's edition um, just to have the read. But and if you like it, then, you know, the, kind of the other ones are like collector's editions as well. Some of them are like, you know, what I'm saying really big, like two foot tall and got pop out images and, and unfolding pictures and stuff. So it's really good. So I'm definitely a devotee of, of the works of Manly P. Hall. And I've dedicated my albums to him, man. Like, you, you know, you can find a lot of his lectures online, too. So I would I would suggest getting that as well. Definitely. Yeah, the reason I asked that was because there were like, there was like five different books, <laughs> same title, same author, but each cover was different. Yeah. So I was like, I was reading through it. Each one had different page lengths and all that. I'm like, which one am I supposed to get? Yeah. I don't want to get. Like, I didn't want to read. I didn't want to just buy. Like they're all the same price. They were selling them for like dollar nine 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 cents on Kindle. Okay. But it's like I didn't want to just grab like the wrong kind. I didn't want to grab like the wrong edition. Yeah. Of his book, I wanted to grab. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, get the uh, yeah, get the reader's edition, and you know that I think that 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 book, the physical book, is cheap too. It's under twenty bucks, and it's a really thick book, man. It's a it's a large collection of work, and um, obviously, you know, you you take everything and you kind of you kind of judge it and kind of you know what I'm saying put it up against the wall and see what sticks. And so I, I you know when I quote people like Manly P. Hall, people say, oh, you know, you're 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 this, you're that. I don't agree with everything Manly P. Hall says. I don't agree with everything anybody says. You know, there, there's times I go back and listen to myself and I'm like, man, why did I say that? You know, so we're all learning and coming to the knowledge of the truth, ever learning, man. Um, but there's a lot of good stuff in there. And if you listen to that song, because I know you just became a patron. Um, if you listen to the song that I have that's not released yet, but it's on Patreon, um, the uh, Invisible Creatures of the Five Elements, like that that understanding and, and like the breakdown of the elemental creatures and the different levels of existence and what they do in the earth and, and they're over the seasons and stuff. Like all of that stuff is mentioned of in the secret teachings as well. It goes into a lot of detail about these different entities and, and beings that kind of operate um, with, with the five elements and, and you know what I'm saying? They're out there. And so somebody asked me to um, a friend of mine, Craig, <coughs> Craig, <clears throat> challenged me a, a while ago on, on Facebook and he was asking me because I, I had a, a run in with an elemental like a, a spirit that kind of knocked me down to the ground me and my my cousin and I wrote about it in my book and he was wanting to know if I made it up like if I was you know making these stories up to sell albums or something but um that's stuff's totally real man you know like um I, I had that experience and so he wants to know how do I know that I had it you know, you know, was it just my imagination that appeared and I've seen seen these entities or whatever the case is could totally be your ma your imagination. And you always have to rule that like like with with any any spiritual encounter, like you're always kind of rationalize it and trying to say, like, you know, was this my imagination? Did I make it up? Did I want this to happen so bad that I created the scenario in, in my head? But I'll say for that situation for me that I know that they exist and they can be summoned, right? It's because I wasn't the only one who's seen it. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't the only one who had the encounter. It was me and my cousin. This entity formed out of, out of, you know, the darkest of night. It was, it was like the darkest shadow A being appeared ran past me and my cousin screamed and knocked us both down and it looked like an eight foot tall camel you know what i'm saying so <laughs> that's i mean that's how i know that that something happened man you know what i'm saying because it wasn't just me if it was just me in the woods it was like you know yeah you know something happened or whatever the case is but when it happens to somebody else see that's the whole thing if people who listen to like joe rogan or talk about dmt experiences and your brain produces dmt that People claim to, you know, wake up and, and, and be seeing beings in their room and stuff like that. And he tries to explain even UFO encounters as just DMT released in your brain and you think you see these. But there's something else when two people experience the same thing at the same time. And that's that's kind that's kind of how you know that that something's up. You know what I'm saying? It's like somebody else experienced it as well. <sighs> Yeah, well, I'm going to hop off, but I always appreciate calling in. It's always been fun, but I wanted to say before I go that I really appreciate what you do. I mean, I listen to your podcast while I work. I listen to I jam your music all the time in between those two and just talking to you and, and all you know. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to try to – Um, I definitely want to try taking more time to read because I have a bunch of books on the shelf. I haven't read both, like – Christian and Christian books I bought for my church, and I just bought a bunch of other kind of books today. Like I bought, I finally got around to. I bought a the Jesus a Worm the Snake too, that you had with yeah. uh, Kendall Shoulder. Oh, you bought it? I just, yeah, I just got it today. Yeah, you listened to that interview, right? Oh yeah, that was awesome. I know, right? I was scared to do that interview because, like. He he actually approached me and and wanted to to actually buy some ad space on 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 the podcast and so I said okay we'll do it you know it's the first the first person who ever who ever did that and so we did it and I posted the upcoming episode that we were to do with him and the title Jesus is a worm a snake and much more by Kendall Shoulders and some of my friends were reaching out to me like hey man like what's what's that about is this guy gonna come on and say that Christ was 
a worm and a snake or he didn't exist or what, what you know what is this guy about i was like honestly i don't know but i know he he paid t- to come on the show pretty much right i was like sure we'll do it man so i was a little nervous going into it because i don't want to entertain foolishness really you know what i'm saying but he came mm-hmm. on and did the interview and it was literally one of the best interviews i've ever done like you know what i'm saying the knowledge that 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 he brought throughout the entire interview and then all the way at the end about what that meant about the whole Jesus being a worm and a snake is allegories throughout the scriptures that people skip over. Like people read these things about, it it says it in the Bible that Jesus is a worm and a worm shall come forth forth and do all this stuff. And he breaks that worm's life down and how it all, that worm's life is a, a symbol of the life of Jesus, man, and how he gives up his life for his people and things like that. So it was real deep and mind blowing. And then at the end ties everything back into intimacy with Jesus, which is really deep about going into the secret wedding chambers with, with God and, and becoming impregnated, you know, in, in that, in that place and coming out mm-hmm. with a with a message, man. And uh, all that stuff is just really, really deep. And that was one of the best interviews that i've that that or, or or guests that i've had on that uh i was scared going into you know mm-hmm. but yeah with all that that you've been doing i can honestly say you've been discipling me and i couldn't ask for a better person to be discipled by i've been able i've learned more from you than anyone else i've ever been trying to disciple by because i had a couple of guys that tried and it just couldn't stick but you stick and so it's an honor to be discipled by someone with as much knowledge as you had to, you have. Well, we're, you know what? I don't, you know, there, there's stuff you, you, that, that, you know what I'm saying? You're teaching me too, man. So it's a kind of, you know what I'm saying? Our <laughs> hierarchy goes sideways in the body of Christ. When it's not a pyramid structure, I'm not over anybody or claim to be, you know, the, uh, end all when it, when it comes to knowledge or understanding. But I appreciate that though, man. Thank you so much, dude. That means a lot, man. Yeah. Well, if you ever get Lori back on, tell her I said blessings and shalom. Oh, yeah. I'm sure she'll go back and listen, man. Yep. Blessings and, and shalom to Lori if we don't hear from her again. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a good day. I got to give you some grub. I'm starving. I heard that. All right, brother. Enjoy your day, man. All right. Blessings and shalom, brother. Peace, peace. Honey Hughes, everybody. Good brother there. We got another call coming in. Uh, it says... uh Caller from Southwest Pennsylvania. Caller, who are we speaking with? Hello? Caller from Southwest Pennsylvania. Hello? Hey. Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Good. Who are we speaking with? Jacqueline Dawn. Hey, how are you? You good? I'm good. I was just tuning in to Lori, but I, I've i never done this before, and I don't know if I did it right. Oh, you're on You're on live, Obviously, but... Obviously, I did. I did yeah, you, you're on. But... Yeah, I guess I'm on live. I was like a radio show that you listen to, or... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it's a... It's a it's, it's a podcast, and, you know, we stream live on Facebook and YouTube, and then we're archived on iTunes and all the podcast apps and stuff, so. Okay. I was just going to listen to Lori talk, but I guess she's gone already. Yeah, um, her, her, I think her reception went out. She said, she said her phone kept overheating, but, uh, yeah, she, uh, <laughs> maybe she'll be back, maybe not. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Did you have any questions? Alrighty. Do you have any questions about anything? Maybe I can help. Uh, I don't know. Like, I was just tuning into Lori. Um, now I wish I had, like, questions. Uh, what's the topic? Like, what are you guys talking about? Just spirituality and ascension and, and you know, waking <laughs> yeah. up. Okay. Um, well, um, geez. I'm sorry. I should have been more prepared. No, I wasn't sure how this worked. You're good. It's all good. Just let me know if you come up with anything, and uh, I'll try my best to answer it. Okay. So, uh, so I mean, have you had an, you know, what I'm saying like an awakening um, encounter as well? I'm sure if you're connected with Laura, you've had something going well, on, right? Yeah. Like yeah. 
I mean, I pretty much woke myself up. Like, I pretty much just read and read and read and, um, yeah, just a lot of reading. And uh, I haven't had, like, a lot of experiences like Lori's had, but, um, yeah, I'm still trying to pop my third eye. <laughs> I heard that. Um, what are some of the, uh, the uh, books or materials that kind of kind of helped you to wake up? I listen to a lot of Corey Good and David Wilcox. Okay, Corey Good. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. I yeah, I write a lot of posts for Cosmic Disclosure actually. Okay. Um, like I just rewrite the transcripts for people. Like I sum it up so that it's not so long. That's awesome. Because so, I feel like yeah, like I feel like that information should be getting out to the public. Yeah. Um. David Wilcock played a huge, oh, yeah. a huge part of my awakening, and um, watching 2012 mm-hmm. Enigma that that was like the that, that was my entrance into the spiritual like realms of deeper understanding was was 2012 Enigma. Yeah, yeah, I think 2012 kind of did it for everybody, right? That's yeah. when Gaia ascended. Yeah. 12, 21, 12, right? Mm-hmm. So now she's just waiting for all her children wake up kind of thing mm-hmm. which is pretty much pretty quickly because we're having a lot of waves here coming in energetic waves um people are handling it you know kind of some people are going crazy and some people are in total zen so it's either or yeah um yeah like with this solar flare they keep talking about this solar flare is going to make you either go mad or um you know in a zenful uh, kind of spot, so I guess it, it it depends if you go into your heart space or or if you're lost in your mind and in your ego. Um, yeah, which the, way you kind of go with that? There's a lot. There's a lot of people there. Um, you know, when it, whenever those energies do come in, and how to balance it, and and I think that's where a lot of people who are into like astrology like they can see the signs and i've got friends who they don't like they like they're supposed to go see a psychiatrist right they have these different energies coming in in their body and they're really receptive to Mm -hmm. it and and they're they're all over the place really but they've learned to study astrology and know what type of week or day to prepare for like when it's good to focus on your work when it's good to kind of be around a crowd of people because they're so sensitive to the shift, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's what's so powerful about that. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Everybody's kind of reacting differently, but it all depends if you've done the inner work. So if you have a bunch of skeletons in your closet, it ain't going to be pretty for you, you know? <laughs> so you have to deal... <laughs> yeah, like I'm finding that out now. Like uh, with all the knowledge I took in, I, I realized I totally forgot about myself and like, There'd be days where I wouldn't eat and I wouldn't even like shower or work out. I would just keep reading and reading and like just another, just constantly. And then I realized that all the knowledge in the world can't save me. Only I can. And I have to love myself. Yeah. And I totally forgot about myself through this whole awakening. I literally just found out like not very long ago listening to one of my really good friends, Linda McGillis really summed it up that I need to love thyself, heal thyself, to know thyself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I am just figuring that out right now that, it, you know, all the knowledge doesn't really mean anything if you don't love yourself. Yeah. Because, you know, you yeah. can't love anybody if you don't love yourself. Yeah, it's all about <laughs> healing the healers and doing the work within yourself, you mm-hmm. finding healing, you coming to this place of, yeah. of, of like self acceptance and everything. And so once you're healed, the universe or God essentially mm-hmm. sends you back out there to go forth and heal other people. Like I was doing energy work for a while. Right. Yeah. And everybody who contacted mm-hmm. me for like a personal session, like they were all people who wanted to be healers. It was people who wanted to do what I were do- yeah. was doing. And so that kind of showed me something in, in, yeah. in the spirit of God just says, heal the healers. There's so many people out there who have this, this calling and this um, urge to do good in in humanity but they're they you know they have the skeletons in the closet and they don't know how to keep them in there or should they let them yeah. out how do they you know you know what i'm saying destroy yeah. the the ego and do the yeah. shadow work and things like I'm that, that. Mm-hmm. yeah I, I work with the energy too 
also, and people, you know, they all think it's hocus pocus, and that's fine. But I mean, science science is proving it now. Like they got thermal imaging going. So for all the skeptics out there, it works within minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and people are like, oh my gosh, like how can you be that? Well, you know, newsflash, like we are all connected. So what Jesus did, we can do too. And greater. People need to open their mind, open their heart to the possibilities. Yeah, like really. Yep. You know, and it's right in our face too. Like um, the cabal is always putting it in our face. Like um, what's that new song, Sign of the Time? Mm -hmm. um, by, I can't remember his name, but he's like walking on water and flying and stuff. And people think, oh, you know, it's nothing, but like, this is real. It's happening. Like, you know, like Star Wars and stuff like that's all very real. And they like to put it in their face to make it look funny because they program us with the giggle factor. So we laugh at anything that looks, you know, too high above us or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like I have, it's, yeah, it's been a journey. I've been trying to, you know, regain my abilities yep. back, and I'm getting a lot of telepathy. Like, my telepathy is really good. I'm starting starting to pull people, like, before they speak, I, I say what they're thinking. They're like, oh, my God, you read my mind. Like, yeah, I don't know how I did that, but... It's weird, because it... it so, like, yeah, like, it's totally connected. Yeah, it, like, comes in waves, too, man, because you're talking about, like, having to do the work... <laughs> on yourself because there's times where you get into this this energy and we, we were talking about synchronicities and stuff and it's like all of these things start happening where <laughs> you're able to tell the future you know who's about to call before they call you're seeing signs everywhere like the number yeah. is 333 you're creating yeah. it as, as you speak everywhere. there's manifestation happening you know what i'm saying in your life whatever you want is coming and then you may get into a rut where it's like you feel like you're in a desert and none of that stuff even existed man that's the that's the weird thing is to kind of keep it up and kind of maintain the work you know i think that's the ego that does that it mm -hmm. makes you it pulls out the old programming and tells you you can't do it and you're little and you can't what are you doing and you know go back to your slave job like it's just you're programmed to not think about this kind of stuff um like every time i talk about anything astral projection or teleportation or whatever with anybody they're just like whoa it's too much for them <laughs> yeah. so you know but more and more people are looking at it though like more and more people are waking up it is kind of crazy like my facebook i have like over two thousand people now like so people are wanting to know more about it I'm even going to write a book, actually, How to Exit the Prison Planet, uh, Heal Thyself, Heal the World. Mm -hmm. That's what so that will make a big push. <laughs> yeah, so pretty much you'll be like, you know, what's wrong with society and then like how to fix it. So like it will tell you like the fluoride in the water, but it will tell you like, like how it kills your pineal gland, but then it will tell you like how to decalcify it kind of thing. Yeah, that's and so my whole book will be like problem and like how to fix it like yeah you so, kind of got to give both yeah. and I, that, that was like the big thing for me because I, I, yeah. I like I, you know what I'm saying I come out of like really deep Christianity and, and like in the church circles and stuff and so I would see all these problems yeah. with these ministers and these preachers and these doctrines and when I first started coming out of that stuff I just started pointing out the doctrines and exposing it and showing that it's wrong and these people just want your money yeah. and all of this stuff but eventually oh, yeah. God had to sit me down and say look the only way to combat that stuff is not to expose it, not to call names and point fingers, but to simply teach it the right way. And so if you're out here just pointing fingers mm -hmm. without any type of solution, you, 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 your work is kind of in vain. So, yeah, you got to have the solution as well. And I don't think God shows you a problem without showing you, you know what I'm saying, the solution as well. You know, you got to get to the bottom of that and, and kind, kind of do the work and do the oh, yeah, research yeah. on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally agree. So there's a lot of people waking up. Yeah, like, oh, I know. And, like, I wasn't born with, like, religion. My dad didn't ever let me. Like, I started reciting the Bible, and that was it. My dad took it away. So, <laughs> I mean, I didn't, have, I didn't have a lot of religion. But, like, as soon as I see movies start coming out, like The Craft. Yeah. And, like, um, Hocus Pocus and stuff, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then Charmed came out, yeah. and it was like, oh, like, this is fun now. Like, yeah, so I knew something was up. Yeah. Um, after seeing that kind of stuff. 
that yeah. that that stuff kind of you know what I'm saying kind of did it for f- for me too. But it's so weird because it it kind of mm-hmm. it kind of sent me and on a on like a downward spiral because it was just letting me know that that stuff was real and it kind of. But I was getting into I was doing it wrong, man. I ended up like opening up my mind to all types of ent- entities that wanted to come through and I, and it was it was honestly because yeah. of, of seeing you know that that uh, that uh, movie the craft or whatever i was like man this i want this man this is what i want and so i would go i would and this is funny because i wouldn't go out and buy books we would go to books a million and steal books steal witchcraft books you know and, and try to start doing all these, yeah. these different chants and meditations and i wanted to just see something and i started opening up my mind and and doing this stuff and saying okay whatever wants to come through whatever i want just want to see something I ended up becoming possessed, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to be careful doing that stuff. And, and so, so, you know, oh, yeah. so like a movie or something that's that, you know, essentially is beautiful. It opened up me to some, some pretty dark entities, man, of not having <laughs> well, a guru. Yeah, like, they too, right? yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't have somebody telling me how to do it. I just seen... I seen a meditation to open up your mind and spirits. I'm like, okay, this is what you do. And just open up. And I say, okay, anything that wants to come through... And I, I ended up getting possessed, yeah. man. It, yeah, it was it was bad. It's not a game. This is really happening. Yeah, like you have to be careful. You have to protect yourself. Yeah. Um, I always put myself in America, and I'm always like staging and like incense and stuff. Um, but yeah, that it gets to be pretty scary. Um, yeah, there is a dark side. Obviously, like they're running the world. Duh. Yeah. So I mean, but for the love right now is like so high that they're literally all being exposed for what they are. Mm-hmm. You know, you almost don't need to do and that and they're dropping like flies, like, you know, like um, Rockefeller died yeah. and like uh, Bill Clinton's on his way out and I'm sure his wife will be right behind him. Mm-hmm. Like they're, you know, they can't, they can't exist in this frequency anymore because the frequency is way too high. What was the last human residence? Like 120 or something? Mm-hmm. It's like really high. Like it's usually at like nine hertz or something. Like wow. So yeah, it's a new era. Like 2017 is year one, right? Yeah. Um, the end of three cycles, 26,000 year karmic cycles, and 3D is like you know 100 times more pain and suffering than any other realm above. So you know we should all just high five each other because we made it. Oh, you know. Man. Yeah. That's why I like David Wilcox work so much. Cause he actually, I know I love David Wilcox. It's he, very good. They really sum everything up, don't they? Yeah, because he actually talks about, you know what I'm saying, like the dark side. A lot of people, like in the New Age circles or the spiritual circles, oh, yeah. they're like, oh, we don't focus on anything bad. Anything bad is just here to help us, which essentially it is. It's definitely there. I went through that stuff for a reason. But yeah. you got to be careful. Some people die in that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like some people get in over their head. I know, I know. And they don't make it out, so we, oh, yeah. so we we kind of got to be careful, man. You know, and kind of be able to do well, the energy work. you have to raise your vibration. Yeah. This is why you need to be in a higher vibration of you know love, compassion. This is why you need to have compassion for the cabal, the celebrities, the people that are yeah. chained into the system, the puppets. Yeah, we have to have compassion for them because they are part of the puzzle too. Yeah. they're part of the bigger picture, the grand experiment, right? Especially, so, especially if oh, if, yeah. like, if like the celebrities wake up and come out of it and and, and start showing shedding light on what they've been through, hey, you know. What I I'm saying? Star, like Russell Brand, yeah. hey, Russell Brand exactly. has the rebirth going yeah. on. Like, yeah, like he's got it going on. Like he knows exactly what he's like. People think he's crazy now when he's talking, but like it's all you can see. He's almost channeling people when yeah. he's speaking to people, and his eyes are just piercing like yeah i bet he's channeling when he does that i notice i think i'm starting to channel too just it just comes through you it, it's hard to explain man i i, so, um, I got, parts, you just hear that or something I've, I've got a comment here and somebody somebody says uh it says my brother you on fire god bless oh. and, and, and there's times where like i'll start talking oh. and i can feel it i feel I feel like yeah. what, what I'm saying is supposed to be said, like in it, in like, it's not me. It's not me articulating. Like I'm trying to get the message across, yeah. but it's totally not me, whether it's the heart of God yeah. or the Holy spirit or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's something that has to be said. And I yeah. feel like the divine push behind it, you know, yeah. and that's and what I we feel like they're all to. saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. If you're talking, if you're channeling a higher being, 
we're all saying the same thing. Compassion, forgiveness, stop the wheel of karma. We're all saying the same thing. Yep. You know? And if you're not, so, it, it, then, it, yeah, like, like, you know what I'm saying? If they're not, then you need to get away from them. if you're not, you're a lower being and you need to stop. Yeah, if it's any fear or, like, yeah, lower, yeah, yeah it's not good. Like, stop talking to this person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but my, I'm always high vibe, so I don't usually have that problem. But, I mean, I used to have, I used to be really depressed and stuff, and then someone told me I had a soul uh, cord attached to my baby daddy. Because mm-hmm. if you have kids with someone, apparently, apparently you have a soul cord attached yep. to them. Yeah. And then whatever's feeding on them can come down the line and feed on you. So I went to a shower and got that cut. Yeah. And, and yeah. removed or whatever. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, I felt so light after that. I was like, wow. Yeah. That- I feel so light. That was the only word I could give the shaman. How do you feel? Light. <laughs> They're, yeah, they're even yeah, showing like now. Like I think, I think our scientists mm. are even showing now that it's not just who you have a baby with, but who you go to bed with sexually. Like you, like that person becomes. Yeah, a, I think I heard something like that too. Yeah, there was something that mm-hmm. we that, that you, you know. Work on that. Uh, yeah, soul attachment. I know it's yep. serious stuff. Mm-hmm. Like that's why you need to do the inner work, so you're not um, holding all that karma and whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah, it could, it, you know, yeah, it could rip you apart if you hold on to all that anger, whatever you're holding on to from the past. Because then you're living in the past, right? Yeah. And so many people live in the past. They're stuck in their traumatic memories, and they don't know how to stop. This is why people do drugs and and whatnot. Yep. Trying so, to find some type uh, of way out. So you know, they need to. Yeah, they just don't know who they are. They don't realize they're spiritual beings in a human body, that they're not human. They're spiritual beings. They're multidimensional. They're, um, you know, like we can be invisible if we want. Like if so, if I said that to someone on the street, they'd think I'm insane, mm-hmm. but that's fine. Yeah. Like this is happening. People can walk through walls. Like it's, it's already been happening. There's people around us we just can't see because we haven't popped that third eye. Yep. You know, I'm still trying to. I'm going to get rebirthed soon, actually. On Tuesday, I'm going to get rebirthed with my really good friend, Angela Mia White, mm-hmm. who's going to rebirth me on Facebook there. So, like, yeah, I'm just waiting. Because I just want, because I still have a little bit of fear and stuff and um, traumatic memories and stuff. So I just think the rebirthing will really help me um, yeah, just, get yeah, into just, my confidence, you know. Yeah, just, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just, just do what you said as far as walking in forgiveness like you know what i'm saying forgiveness and mm-hmm. and just releasing yeah, them so that and- yeah and so that they won't have anything on you like they, mm-hmm. you know you know what i'm saying cut those ties yeah. once and for all so that you can walk yeah. in victory yeah. and, you know what i'm saying walk in your best life now and kind of mm-hmm. embrace your destiny of what what like everything that god has for you man you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and i like that when i heard that um everybody's you know, wants to do their sole purpose or their sole destiny or whatever. And I heard somebody saying, your sole purpose is right now. And this moment is just always your sole purpose and sole destiny. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Because it really is only here and now, right? There's yep. no time. This density is here and now in this moment. Yeah. So time is fading away. As people can see, time speeding up right now. Mm-hmm. Actually, it feels like it's speeding up. Um, it's kind of like the quickening, I like to call it. So, yeah, there's no yeah, such thing like, as time, man. It's, it's only yeah, the now no moment. Yeah, there's no time. People don't get that either. They think I'm crazy saying that too, and I'm like, that's okay. Yeah, well, like we're all learning. Yeah, I mean, even even you know what I'm saying. Jesus said, "Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about like don't put your 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 mind and your thoughts outside of today or what you could do right now because you start thinking about okay, one day I'm going to be this or one day I'm going to be that. When I was when when I when I had like an intense you know um, psychedelic experience, it like time melts away. There is no time, and and you could see that it it thins that veil. And so I and I just had the impression like I wanted to be a healer. I went and seen a friend of mine who was a healer, and I was like I had the overwhelming sensation to be a healer. And I just felt you know what I'm saying felt the angels and the energies let me know that you already are. 
don't want to be a healer. Mm-hmm. Don't don't project the thoughts. You know, one day, maybe two years from yeah. now, I'll get good at it. Maybe I'll get some clients or whatever the case is and do my passion full time. It's like, no, you already are a healer. Now, if you have to bring that out, that's different. But those giftings and, and talents are already within you for a reason. It's nothing outside of yourself. That's the kingdom of heaven being within. Yeah. As you don't need nothing outside of yourself. Mm-hmm. Everything is already within, man. And that's where the power is. Yeah. Yeah, like, I've been more attuned to the energies, but I always had the energy. Like, it's simple as kissing your son's boo-boo, right? Mm-hmm. You're get- and then they stop crying, see? And it, and it feels better. But that's because you channel the universal, right, your universal life force energy on your own. Like, I've been more attuned from a Reiki master now, so, like, I have a higher vibe now. But, I mean, I could have healed before, too. You just have to believe in yourself. So someone told me that after I spent three thousand dollars, and I was like, "Darn it!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's been quite the road learning um, yeah. all this, you know. And so now I'm sitting here, you know, with all the knowledge that I've taken in in the past few years, it's quite the thing to find out that all of it means nothing if I don't love myself. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, so- I better put the book away and like. Yeah, I concentrate on me. I'm like, oh, what do I like to do? Like, what do I, you know? And then I'm like sitting here dumbfounded kind of like, okay, where do we go from here? But like slowly I'll realize like what I like and stuff, Mm -hmm. you know. Like I like to write and I like to music and um, I love working out. I love weightlifting. um, So I'll be getting back to all what I like to do and, you know, to be happy, that's what you need to do. You don't need to be in a book reading and reading and overwhelming yourself. Because now I'm getting, like, even other people are so worried. Like, even me saying 144,000 star seeds, you know, are stepping into their own divinity. People are, like, overwhelmed by that. And I'm like, don't worry about the number. It's okay. We're just the first ones to hold the torch. It's fine. We're all going to awaken together. Like, yep. you know, but it's overwhelming people to hear that and to hear all the information coming in, you know. And I know it overwhelmed me too. So, um, but yeah. now I'm realizing that it all really means nothing if you don't love yourself. That's the whole point of life. That's not why you're here to heal thyself. Because if you heal thyself, you can heal the world. Because mm-hmm. you are the example. You know, you lead by example. Like, you know. So I'm learning that now, and so it's it's yeah, it's quite crazy. Love has won. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean there. there so, there, there definitely comes a point in time where you have to like put the books down and start applying the knowledge. That was one thing that was big, like in, in the, yeah. Christian, the Christian arena is like, all right, stop studying the Bible and just and, 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 and like having debates about what Jesus said, what he meant or he didn't mean that or this doesn't. There's a rapture coming and these people are going to be taken. You know, what does that mean? When is it coming? Like, stop studying, stop doing all that yeah. and just simply go out and do what Jesus did. Like, it's not that hard. Go out there and love those who are unlovable. Show compassion to those who don't deserve it and just do the work. And we don't need to even debate about it. Go out there and do it. That's all I want to talk about. Go out there and do the work that he did, right? Yes. And like fear is false evidence appearing real, right? Yeah. That's what fear is. Yeah. So anything that lowers your vibration, if if it's hurting you, it's not helping you. So Mm -hmm. let it go. Yeah. Like, I can handle cosmic exposure, the information that comes in. I, I'm not in fear. Maybe that makes me weird or something. I don't know. But I have no fear. I, yeah. I enjoy hearing it, and I enjoy, you know, putting it out to people. And if people don't want to listen, well, then, you know, don't listen then. You don't have to know it all. You only need to know yourself and, and, and how to love yourself is what I'm realizing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the knowledge is out there and, and all the answers are out there, you know, if people really want to wake up, like it's everywhere. Like, yeah. come on. I mean, how many people on Facebook are awake now? Like, Jesus, like in the, you know, 10,000 people, probably more than that. Yeah, I don't even know how many way people more, are Way more, actually. Yeah, probably like, way more. Millions of people. I don't know, but. Yeah, it's a um, lot of people, man. Yeah, and people are, are doing these mass meditations too. These mass meditations are happening on Facebook too, right? Like Maya May, Maya May, I think her name is. Mm-hmm. She does. Um, she posts it all the time for these mass world meditations, and you know, I think we we hit like 144k one time, and it was like epic. Oh yeah. People are like tripping out. Oh my god, this is happening! Like, 
So yeah, that's why I think the Schumann residents like shot up there because everybody's finally tuning in to the real, you know, the real internet. <laughs> yeah. Really. Like the real, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. So we're all connecting and it's, it's quite beautiful to see really. I'm sure it'll be a moment in time here coming up where people will finally come together because people are still in their boxes and they're still secluded on their phone. So it's only a matter of time before people get together. Yeah, like Lori. And, you know, peace, love, and harmony. <laughs> like Lori, she just yeah, moved. Like Lori. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, did she? She moved, eh? Oh, okay. Yeah, she went on a spiritual um, retreat, and, like, and she's never going back home. And she's oh, staying yeah. where she's at. <laughs> oh, really? I noticed that she, I noticed she went somewhere, but I didn't know that she wasn't going back to Yeah, she told me cool. she's not going. Yeah, she's I mean, yeah, like, I'll probably do that, too. I'll probably want to relocate, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm from, um, like, Flatland, so I wouldn't mind being near, like, a mountain or oh, something. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, we, hey, we got another yeah. phone call coming oh. through. Let me, let me try to take this other phone call as well. Okay. I, yeah, I'll go ahead and leave you on the line, though. So we got a, we got a caller from oh, okay. East, East Virginia. Oh. Who are we speaking with? This is Irk. Irk, what up, man? Thanks for calling, dude. Well, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Uh, doing really good, man. Blessed and highly favored. Huh? That's awesome, man. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, dude. Thanks yeah, so much for coming on as a supporter, time. man. That means a lot. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate everything you do. All, your music is very inspirational. Uh, my coworkers get sick of hearing it, but <laughs> doesn't bother me none. <laughs> That's what's up. So you've been checking out some of the new stuff on there that I've I've got. I have, I have. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. For sure. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to put it put it together on an album and just have it out there for the public, man, for Awakening. Um, Watchmen's album's almost done, dude, and that's that 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 song on there, um, Angels Among Us and Precious Mind. Like those are both going to be on his album, and like within the next couple weeks, we're going to start rolling out like like a sampler to listen to the whole thing and it's it's beautiful man if you if, if you're a fan of my stuff i'm singing on a lot of stuff in the background and stuff too so we got we got several collabs on there it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome man oh yeah yeah so yeah do you have any questions no, or anything, no I'm a, well i've been a student of many religions for many years now i uh i think i told you i collect uh religious and spiritual texts yeah and you pointed me towards the uh, recognitions of Clement. Oh yeah, I've gotten a little, little bit through it. You're right; I couldn't find it in paper. Yeah, I know that's there's sucks. no printed version that I can find. So yeah, um, did you did you did you read the part the parts about the demons and uh, them you know taking over your body and stuff through like gorging yourselves on on meat and food and stuff? Did you read that part? It seems to have alluded to that. I'm I'm only a few pages into it so far, but I've bookmarked the uh, PDF. I'm continuing to read it at my leisure. Okay. Make sure that that's the copy you're reading because I think there's a few different ones. Make sure that's the one that has it. it I think it may be on in there, you know what I'm saying, some chapters, but definitely make sure that that's the one because that's, that stuff's powerful, man. Excellent. Yeah. I'll try to see if I can do some more research on it and post it, but I know there's a couple different uh, – you know what I'm saying, versions of it or whatever, but that's definitely one that needs to be kind of brought to the forefront. Back to something y'all were talking about earlier with the, uh, the Joseph Campbell stuff. That's kind of my hobby. Is I've been a student of his work for a long time and kind of putting together my own stuff to try and build on his work and uh, Carol Pearson's work, which built on his work. And... Uh, I'm applying it to a lot of the modern day like stuff, the, the the TV shows and the movies that are coming out, and they're still using the the path of the hero, the journey of the hero, for all of the scripts. I was kind of upset about that because I'm, I remember just saying to my wife a couple of years ago, like. Why does every movie that come out, it's the same story. It's a bad guy who takes something, he takes the girl, and then the guy's trying to win her back or something like and it's his it's his journey to to do that and then to get to the end to defeat the enemy or or to defeat the obstacle. Like 
it's almost the same script in every movie, man, and it all points back to Joseph Campbell. Oh, oh yeah, it, I think he nailed the formula. It's probably the only one that will hit and touch the people because it's as close to the energies that exist that that guide us as they can get. Yeah. It's the journey. It totally is. I mean, when we apply it's, it to the Bible, it's <laughs> totally, totally the, you know what I'm saying, the work of Jesus. I mean, that's that's his journey. The hero journey is essentially the story of Christ and the story of all the risen saviors who came, suffered, Man. taught, rose again, and ascended. You know, that's what we're doing spiritually as well. So, Yeah, the self-sacrifice is... Yep. And it Always come, there. Then. Coming back to help your people or help somebody out of a situation. Yeah. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's an awesome graph, man. There's some, some some cool graphs. And to kind of tie it back to David Wilcock, because we talked about him, is I actually learned about Joseph Campbell through watching uh, some stuff on David Wilcock. So he's the one that kind of showed me that work, you know? Yeah, I haven't watched much of him on on YouTube, but I did uh, read the Synchronicity Key when it came out and was on a bestseller list. Um, it was quite interesting work. I didn't didn't quite agree with all of it, but he had some great points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. not a yeah. That's with everybody, man. You know. Oh yeah. That's with everybody. So and it was people who are like out to prove him to be a fraud. Oh, you like David Wilcock? Well, he, he's a fraud. He he predicted this and like, man, listen. <laughs> The, the stuff that he spoke about changed my life. It resonated with me when I was at a, you know what I'm saying, a time of exploration and, you know, a time out there by myself. And so that stuff helped me, and I, I still vouch for it, man. I, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? And and they do the same thing about Manly P. Hall. I quote him. They say, well, he was a Freemason and a, a devil worshiper, and you're promoting him. Or, or even Marilyn Manson. I even talk about, you know, I'm saying liking some of his music and some of the, you know what I'm saying, the artistic side. Does that mean I agree with everything the dude says? No. And for you to try to lump me in that, that realm is ridiculous to put me in these boxes, you know? Yeah, I had, uh, because of my studies, I ran across Santos on the YouTube and he introduced me to a whole new world. I had never really made the association of the, the anthropomorphization of the heavens into these stories until I heard him be able to show the associations between everything, between fairy tales and, and movies to, you know, to these archons, the, the archetypes that we associate with these particular numbers, the one, three, four, seven, twelve that circulates through every story. As above, so below. It. As above, so below. Yeah, and that's what people don't get about the Manly P. Hall thing. I own uh, Secret Teachings of All Ages. He's actually telling you things that they keep secret. Yeah. He, he's not one of them. Yeah. He, he brings forward this information that they like to keep in their back pocket and never show anybody. Yeah, pe people like, people try to say like he he he's a devil worshipper or he he teaches all this stuff. He don't even teach anything. He goes back and shows you what ancient cultures and secret society believes. He's not telling you to do something yeah. or if he's talking about elementals like he's not teaching you how to how to like worship them or promoting worship of angels or nothing. He's just he's a historian essentially, you know? That is the truth. He just brings the knowledge forward. He's not advocating witchcraft or demons. Or, he just talks about ancient knowledge, that, you know, because they're not taught in the public education system. Uh, it scares these people. Yeah. Anyone that's willing to condemn someone that's never read their work or it, is ignorant, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, brother, you know my story. When I, when I was in, in Christianity talking about all this stuff, man, Man, that was a that was a roller coaster, man. Like, and when I was when I was telling her about you know coming out of witchcraft and getting like really in, into these spirits and getting possessed by demons, like that was a very dark place for me, right? But when I was demonized by my Christian 
you know what I'm saying, brothers and constituents and stuff. And I was known as a evangelist in the, in, in the area. And when everybody who was promoting my work and having me out at events to share my story, then they started calling me a devil worshiper and I didn't have nobody to talk to. And that was a dark place, man. You know what I'm saying? Of like just being out there, you know what I'm saying? Feeling like you're by yourself. And that's why podcasts like this are so awesome. Cause I was calling in all kind of podcasts, dude. I was calling the Egyptians up. They talking about tachyon energy and the force and all that. And I'm like, I'm picking their brain and, you know, checking out, uh, you know what I'm saying? James. Yeah. All, all that stuff, man. So that's, that's why it's so important to actually be talking about this stuff and be, and just have an open mind, even if you don't agree with any of it, just to talk about it, you know? Even if there's not much other association, the word alchemy, you know, stems from, means the god of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Al, you know, Al is El, which is an ancient deity generic name, and Kemet was the name of Egypt. We call it Egypt. They didn't. They called it Kemet. Yep. K-E-M-E-T. Kemet, yep. Alchemy. Yeah, people. I mean, it's um, it, it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, I'm I, I'm I'm enjoying the ride, and uh, it definitely comes through in waves, but it's it's still fun. So, well, I think, uh, mm-hmm. hey, man, we're coming upon the end of the show, and I think my my computer is about to yeah. shut down as well. We're running so much stuff here on this bandwidth. So, dude, th- thanks. Well, I love you, brother. Thanks for everything you do, dude. Thanks for supporting me. It 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 totally helps me to keep going. One hundred percent. I'm not just saying that. It really does. Excellent. Um, just a little thing. You should add uh, the super chat to your YouTube. You might uh, find some more supporters. Yeah. Um, it's a way that some people support that others don't. It's a yeah, yeah. True. Um, I actually had it on the on the um, old channel, but then my channel got deleted, and I, I had it, and I try to sign up for it now, and it says that it's not available. So. I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that, but yeah, I, I used to have it. I, I didn't, I didn't have any <laughs> any supporters on it, but I had it, and I've seen, I've seen other people use it, and people just, you know, give out the woodwork on on things like that. But yeah, I'm gonna try to get that back going, man. I kind of lost faith in the whole YouTube thing, man. I had like eight thousand subscribers, and they just pulled my junk, dude. Um, and and it, and you know what I'm saying? They don't tell you why, and that's what sucks about it, you know. I'll get a hold of you again at another time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say God bless and shalom, brother. You do your thing, man. All right, brother. You too, brother. Shalom, shalom. Later. All right, my friend from Pennsylvania. You still there? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. And I'm actually from Canada. Oh, Canada. Okay. <laughs> I can I can hear it in the, I, I, I can hear it I can hear, I can hear it in the voice and that's, <laughs> that's how I was trying to put two and two together. I was like, okay. Yeah, I'm Canadian. <laughs> Dude, we've been we've. But um, we've, thanks we've, for having me on. Yeah, no, it was cool, man. Be you know, feel free to call in any time. We have a lot of guests on here, and you know, everybody calls in to kind of. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, kind of shares their story. So this this cool, episode yeah. will be up on on iTunes and, and 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 on the website and all that good stuff. So go back and oh, check okay. it out. So. Cool. Thanks Thank for, you. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for thanks for being a part of the show. Connect with me on social media too. Send me a friend request on there. Okay. All right, my friend. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right, Shalom, so Shalom. Take care. Right, Namaste. Namaste. You going to the store with me? Nah, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay. Get it. He doesn't get it. Anyway, look, man. Thank you guys for rocking with me, and we kind of worked through. Uh, whatever comes, man, what it, you know, we, we just try our best to make it happen. And we was able to get Lori on for a good bit. She shared some awesome knowledge, some awesome insight, and I'm sure we'll have her on again in the future and definitely work together some more. So all the times, like, feel free to call in, man. You guys make this show interesting instead of me just sitting sitting here because I don't have nothing prepared to, to, to just go into. So when you guys call in with questions and comments and stuff, it makes it a lot more fun even for me. So all this stuff is archived. You guys know that on iTunes and on the website truthseeker.com and it, it means a lot that you guys are supporting. So if you want to pledge support and you want to help us uh, partner with what we're doing and uh, help us pay bills and, and, and reach out to new technologies and things like that. If you believe in my work, essentially, uh, you can go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker and become a patron at any amount, anywhere from a dollar to a thousand dollars, whatever you want to do. Like I said, a dollar is totally 
awesome. Like I have 14,000 followers on Facebook and if everybody gave a dollar, there's no telling what we could do, man. And I'm I'm looking forward to the future. I'm looking forward to building with you guys and putting out more works and be able to put more money into my art and be able to create more music videos and produce albums quicker and stuff like that. So essentially what that does for me is it saves time for me having to do graphic art on the side or like build a website for somebody to make money to put into my art or put into the podcast or whatever. So anything you guys are doing over there, man, it's so awesome. And you get perks and rewards too. You get access to music that's not released yet. And all the topics that we're covering in this podcast and like that's the stuff I talk about in my music like a lot of people don't even know that I do music they just listen to the podcast and they find it out that way so go you know go to truthseeker.com scroll to the bottom you can hear some of the music as well so um, all that's on there Uh, we're going to be doing exclusive podcasts that are for patrons only and you guys can ask me questions on there and stuff and I'll try to weave them into incorporate them into the podcast and do the research to try to give you the best answer that I can so all that to be said I just simply want to say thank you. Uh, if you have, if you're interested in any of the books that we talked about, we talked about the Alchemist. We talked about uh, the Secret Teachings of All Ages. You know, guys, I I vouch for a book called The Final Quest by Rick Joyner that helped me out so much in my spiritual walk and understanding the spirit realm and how to access it. If you want to support the show as well, you can go to audibletrial.com. That's audibletrial.com backslash truth seeker and you can go there and actually download your first audiobook for free so any of any of those books that we mentioned are on there you could download that for free and i just started doing that because i actually drive a truck for a living so i'll, I'll download a book and like just listen to hours of, of, of these audiobooks and have all these books under my belt and there's some awesome works out there there's nothing um there's nothing that anybody has ever been through that ever existed that is not mentioned of in a book Anything you can think of. And most of the time, it's on um, audible, <laughs> audible.com. So audibletrial.com backslash true seeker. We get the kickback if you sign up on there. So thank you guys so much. We got some awesome shows coming up next week as well. And I haven't really told anybody, but I guess I'll go ahead and kind of kind of spill the beans. But I'm going to be speaking to Monday. We're going to be speaking to um, Levi O'Brien. And I want to talk to Levi because he was in the documentary Jesus Camp. And if you haven't watched that documentary, trust me, go watch it this weekend or as soon as you hear this and then listen to that interview because I'm going to try to fill in some holes and fill in some gaps. So it's a interview or it's a documentary that they did on a church that um, was really big into spiritual warfare and stuff. And there was this lady there and the lady was, uh, you know, talking to the kids about spiritual warfare and training up these kids. And they, they invited the camera crews to come in and kind of document everything. But when they released it, they spun it in like a negative light and how they're trying being so militant. And some of the stuff they were doing were kind of, was kind of wacky, kind of zany, kind of out there. But you know what? Most of those churches do little weird stuff like that. That's kind of out there anyway. But they put that all in a documentary called Jesus Camp. Really cool. And it's been out for some years. And some of the kids that were on there. They were telling their story and how they came to faith and stuff like that. And then there was interviews after that came out, like that church and all that stuff shut down after that came out. And I've seen recent interviews with some of the people and Levi O'Brien was one of the kids on there. And he talked about how he fell away from the faith and how he doesn't believe in any of that. And he kind of, you know, people just wanted to distance themselves from that. And so then I've seen, I've checked him out on Facebook and now I guess he's, he's back in uh, Christianity or working at a church or something like that. So I want to talk to him about his story, man. I'm really intrigued about that. And that, that whole documentary kind of, you know what I'm saying, blew my mind. And it kind of, I kind of hit close to home too, because I've been in those circles and stuff for years. So it's going to be awesome. That's Monday. And then Wednesday, we're going to be speaking to Tim Freak about consciousness, about reality, and uh, how to stay in that, that realm. Because that's like the thing we need to do. We've all been there, essentially. Maybe not all of us, but most of us have been there. And the, like, once you get there, like the key is on how to stay there and how to stay in the now, stay in the moment. Do not let your mind or your consciousness wander out and, and get caught up. And for me, I call it autopilot. We get on autopilot all the time. We got this routine that we do daily, daily, daily. And then next thing we know, weeks and months have passed by and we haven't taken the steps that we need to take to do the work spiritually or to get where we need to be in life that we know we're supposed to be doing. So Tim Freak, 
is going to uh, show us uh, different techniques that he does, and he has conferences where they teach people how to stay in that now moment because that's the only moment that we have, right? It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to talking to him. I listened to him on Freeman's podcast, and it, it you know what I'm saying, kind of blew me away. So talking to him. Like I said, all of this is on iTunes. Make sure you guys subscribe, iTunes.com. Just go to iTunes and type in True Seeker. Click that subscribe button to get notified as soon as we release new material. I love each and every one of you guys. You guys are awesome. And thank you guys for being a part of my journey and a part of my life. And um, looking forward to talking to you guys. Call in next week. Shalom, shalom, peace.